Before we go further with planning, let us see how planning differs from search and from other methods like mean sense analysis that we have come across earlier. In fact, some of you may recognize this particular figure. We had exactly the same figure when we were talking about mean sense analysis. Well, first let us compare planning to search. Here is what we could do. Given the initial state, we could apply to the initial state all the operators that are applicable to the initial state. That will give us a range of states. Then to each successor state, we could all apply all the operators that were available to that state. That will give us more states. And so we could keep on expanding this. But I'm sure you can see what will happen. There'll be a combinatorial explosion in this. Search for this problem is extremely inefficient. So to take an example of this, this would be like if you were trying to plan a route somewhere, and at each individual intersection, you took each possible turn as a different possible operator to get to the next state. Then for every intersection that those turns led to, you'd consider each turn at those intersections, even if they were taking you far away from your actual goal destination. You can imagine that if you were to look at every single intersection that you encounter on your drive, and every single possible intersection that follows from those turns, you'd get an enormous number of possibilities very quickly, the vast majority of which you're not actually interested in. That's good, David. And to build on this example, what do we actually do when we have to plan a navigation route to go from one location to another location in an urban area? We use knowledge of the goal. The goal tells us what turn to take at every intersection. We want to take a turn that helps us get closer to the goal. So one thing we are learning here is that there are different kinds of knowledge. There is knowledge about the world, the intersections, and the turns, the states and the operators more generally. And there is also tacit knowledge about how to do the operator selection, how to select between various turns at any intersection. This knowledge is tacit and is sometimes called control knowledge. Goals provide us with the control knowledge of deciding how to select between different operators. Let us recall how mean sense analysis worked, how goals provided control knowledge in mean sense analysis. Mean sense analysis is a heuristic method in which we would compare the current state and the goal state and enumerate the differences between them. Then we'll select the operator that will help us reduce the largest difference between the current state and the goal state. That's one way of using goals as control knowledge to select between operators. Planning provides more systematic methods for selecting between different operators. So the real problem now becomes how to do operator selection, which is the same problem as how to do action selection. Recall that when we were talking about intelligent agents, we define intelligent agents as agents that map perceptual history into actions. Action selection was a key problem, was a central problem. This is why planning is central because it deals directly with action selection or with operator selection. Operators are simply mental representations of actions available in the world. So let us look at what a plan might look like in the language that we have been developing for planning. A plan might look like this. Here is the initial state and a set of successor states. A series of states punctuated by the operators that transform one state into another. Here we have expanded this operator pane ceiling on the right to specify its preconditions and postconditions, and there are several things noteworthy here. Note that the preconditions of this operator exactly match the predecessor state. So we have on robot ladder here, and we have on robot ladder here. So some assertions of the world are true here, and those assertions match the precondition, which is why this operator is applicable. Similarly, the post conditions of this operator directly match the assertions about the world in the successor state. So I have painted ceiling here, and there is painted ceiling there. There is not dry ceiling here, and there is not dry ceiling here. So this provides a very precise way of specifying the states and the operators and the exact connections between them. 